yeah. whether whether it's persistent um, inflation, whether it's you know whether it's the stock market not having a you know a complete uh, crazed move to the upside or crazed move because it, it just does, it hasn't. We're going to talk about what volatility later, but it hasn't felt frenzied in a very very long time. Even even back in twenty two when it was when it was you know kind of a tough it was really tough market in twenty two. It didn't feel frenzied even then. There were that a was, long that was me knocking on this wood. right I now. hear it. Yeah. So let's talk, uh, what else is driving the market? Let's talk inflation a little bit. And this isn't that exciting. Um, but I'll, I'll put up a chart on, on inflation because this is really probably the main thing um, on everybody's mind and the main thing that's talked about. So right now, this is a, uh, this is a CPI inflation chart year-over-year year change in consecutive months above 3%. So we're at 37, 37 months over 3%. So longest period since the late 1980s. Um, you know, the peak was, was 9.1% in June of 22, but the real important part here is that the market, again, we talk about this all the time, the market is an anticipatory, uh, you know, it anticipates what's going to happen and reacts ahead of time. So it, there's been this anticipation that, oh, well, inflation was high, but it's going to continue to come down. Eventually it's going to get down to that 2% range, which is what the Fed wants. And so because um, it's going to come down, they're going to they're going to cut rates and, you know, we're going to get this rate cut, which is going to stimulate the economy. So it's all tied together. And so far, we haven't seen that inflation number come down It came down off of the off the nines. But it's still in the threes and now, you know, three, three and a half and, and not moving off that. And so you're not getting um, which, again, we t just talked about a little bit with tech. Which is why it's so interesting because typically tech wants lower cost of borrowing, which requires lower rates, which means rate cuts, which they're probably not going to cut rates if inflation stays high. So it's kind of been a, a juxtaposition a little bit, but inflation um, is, has not come down like they wanted it to. And that's that's not three percent year over year or or total inflation. <laughs> no, we've talked about before. Inflation is still high. It may right. be coming down. It's nowhere. It's not down to that two percent. Gro growth rate comes growth down. Growth rate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, exactly, and and I think I think last time we showed a chart too, and the, and the you know inflation is like anything; it's compounding. So if you have a nine and an eight and a four and a three, it's not. I mean, everyone thinks, oh, inflation's at three. Yeah, but what about like the last? I think the last chart I showed, or last three years, was when prices are up seventeen percent. Well, that's a pretty good number for people. Cumulative. Yeah, cumulative. So you get to four and five years, and it's up, you know, twenty twenty five percent. I mean, that's. Those are big numbers. So that three number kind of distorts it a little bit. Like, well, it's only three percent. No, three percent year over year and every month that that changes and it compounds on itself. So, but that's where, like I said. So anyway, the market. On, on that note, talk a little bit about Fed funds. And this is something we've discussed at ad, ad nauseum in in this podcast. Is that the, the the market pricing in rate cuts again the market's anticipation of what the fed's going to do and at the beginning of the year there was going to be six to seven rate cuts you can see that that's the blue line up there um we were going to be all the way down at you know 383 by the end of uh, 24 and now they're pricing in two one to two i should say and every day that goes on it looks more like one and and potentially again potentially my zero. prediction's been zero so yeah. it, it, it'll be interesting the market just has this idea that we we're going to have to cut rates um hopefully we don't have to cut them for the reason that you know the economy's in shambles and that's typically the reason that rates get cut but they keep thinking the rates are going to we're just going to have to go back to lower rates because these rates are too high it's like an arbitrary too high number which doesn't exist yeah, correct I mean, we, no we, such thing. we could we could be at these exact same rates three years from now if things keep muddling the, along the way they were the, the way they are and nothing really breaks Either direction, we don't start to get yeah. big inflation again. I mean, again, with oil prices, I mean, oil hasn't run away, you know, to the upside. Like, I think you go back like ten-ish years and go, well, what's gonna, where's oil gonna be, you know, ten years from now? And people go, oh my gosh, it's gotta be, it's gotta be two hundred bucks a barrel. a barrel. Yeah, I mean, at two fifty a barrel, this is, this is, this is immediately gonna, and somehow they keep finding it, and somehow they keep pumping it, and somehow. You know things keep going, and it's, it reminds me a lot about like even this economy, it, in this economy, uh, just how things are, are just resilient. You, yeah. you, whether whether it's persistent um, inflation, whether it's you know whether it's the stock market not having a you know a complete uh, crazed move to the upside or crazed move, it, it, it just does, it hasn't. We're going to talk about what volatility later, but it hasn't felt frenzied in a very very long time. Even even back in twenty two when it was. 
you know, it was, you know, kind of a tough, it was really tough market in 22. It didn't feel frenzied even then. There were that a long... Was, that was me knocking on this wood right I hear it. I, yeah. I heard it. <laughs> Pretty good, Jason. I, I felt it. Well, the other thing, too, is I, I should... Again, we're not perfect on the podcast. Sorry. I should have printed out this chart. Um, if you ever look at it, we'll, we'll do it next time. On a, If you go back, historical Fed, Fed, Fed funds rate, historical interest rates, like everybody has a very recency bias that, mm -hmm. well, yep. you know, rates are always low. Like they're always in this, you know, much lower than they are now. And it's just not true. That we had a very historic period of low interest rates for about the past 10 to 15 years. And that is, that's not the case over time. I mean, I think the high on that chart, again, I'm, I'm drawn from, from memory, was somewhere in 1980. I want to say it was summer of 80 or summer of 81. And rates were like 17 or 18%. And that wasn't, you know, that was an anomaly for the time. But if you look at that average number over the course of interest rates, like, we're not above the average right now. We're we're very we're very much in line with what things have been for a really long period of time. We're very much over what it's been in the last ten years. But again, this is that whole even, even twenty years. Yeah, it's got that's where that's where you get the get recency lower. bias from. Yeah, is because it's been a very long time since everybody anybody got a mortgage. It was nine percent, right? On a, on a regular basis, there's been little spikes. Obviously, just even in this last year, where you know we, we read anecdotally about oh somebody's got an eight and a half percent or nine percent mortgage, but those are those are not super common. You're you're really looking at the sevens and eights, and maybe even the high sixes right now, and people are able to swallow that. We still don't have a tremendous amount of supply on the market, and and when things do come up, it seems like you know they get snatched up pretty quick if they're if they're priced even close to to what it should be. So. Yeah.